and two students, Joseph and Kara. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hi, Joseph. How are you today? Fine, thanks. And Kara, how are you? Good. As we discussed on the phone earlier, I wanted to speak with both of you about the subjects you have chosen to study, and how you are managing your time. Okay? Yes. I think so. Okay. So I'll start with Kara. You've been here for how many months now? I've been here for six months. How are you finding it? It's good. I'm enjoying the course. And what about life outside? Are you making friends and socializing? Not really. People here are quite closed. They don't talk to you. I see. So, what do you do after classes? I usually go home and study, and I might go out for a walk, but never really with anyone. Sometimes my roommate Louisa comes with me, but she always seems to be busy. How is this affecting your schoolwork? I don't think it is, but I miss home. Kara, what I suggest for now is that you look into joining one of the social clubs on campus. There are a variety of them. You can go camping, skiing, snorkeling, painting, dancing, reading, horse riding, rowing. There's a list on the school website. Have a look and work out which one you're interested in and which suits your timetable. You'll meet friends that way and people who have the same career interests as you. As for the subjects you've chosen for a career in microbiology, I think you should look into dropping one of your subjects. And picking it up again next year as a minor, you have a lot on your plate, and this will just cause great pressure. It doesn't mean that you aren't coping, but you're doing about ten hours more than the average student a week. Think about it, and we can make another appointment to discuss it. When are you free? I have an hour free usually on Wednesdays at eleven thirty. Okay, good. Come to my office at eleven forty-five and wait in reception. Okay? Okay. I'll see you then. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Joseph, how are you finding the university? I love it. It's very different from home. Life here is very much focused on study and also socializing through sport. People have been very friendly and curious about my culture. So you've managed to integrate well. I think so. I've joined the rugby team, something I'd never thought I'd be interested in. And how are your studies going? I think I am doing well. I have a few assignments that need some work, but overall, I'm coping. That's good. I'm happy that you're enjoying the university, but remember, don't let your schoolwork get too far behind, because it will pile up, and before you know it, you will be late handing in work. You know that there's a penalty for handing in work late. No, I didn't. You would have been told at the start of the course. During orientation, I don't remember. You need to remember these things. They are very important. You might be an excellent student, but if you consistently hand in work late, you'll be penalised, and you might end up losing your degree over it. That's a lot of years of work. Okay? Yes, I'll remember that. <laughs> and also remember that you have to attend ninety percent of your classes. So far, you have missed five tutorials. Be careful here. 
These could also cost you your degree. Is there any particular reason you missed these classes? I'd been training for our rugby match the night before, and well, we went out afterwards, and I slept past my alarm clock. Joseph, I know this culture must be very different from where you come from, but please try and be a little more conservative with your time. I think maybe you should spend more time on your studies, and less time on socialising. The subjects you've chosen are intensive. I want you to spend three hours a night studying before you decide to do anything else. I'll make an appointment to see you in a month, and we can assess your progress. I'll give you my business card. All my contact details are there. Call me in three weeks to organise another meeting. Do you have any questions for me? No, none. Okay, I'll see you in a month. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between an IELTS candidate and an IELTS administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon. I'm applying for a master's programme at the University of Exeter in the UK. I'm planning to register for the IELTS exam at your centre next month. I have some questions I'd like to ask you before I register, if that's OK. Certainly. Would you be taking the academic module? I think so, but I'll have to contact the university just to make sure. You'll probably need the academic because most universities don't accept the general training. And anyway, the procedures to register for the exam are the same for both the general and the academic modules. Good. My first question is whether I sit all parts of the exam on the same day. I don't live here, you see. And for me, it would be more convenient to do all the papers on the same day. Hmm. Unfortunately, the speaking part is scheduled for Thursdays and reading, writing and listening tests take place on Saturdays. We can't change the days, I'm afraid. Hmm. That's a pity. Well, never mind. What sort of documents do I need to bring in order to register? You'll have to fill in the IELTS application form and bring an ID, a copy of your ID and two passport size photos on a white background. Will any ID do? We only accept original passports and national IDs. That's good to know. Did you say that reading, writing and listening are scheduled for Saturday? That's right. Will I get a break in between the papers? I'm afraid there aren't any breaks between the papers. Each paper takes an hour to complete, so it's three hours straight through. You'll first do listening and then reading followed by the writing test. This is a standard requirement from Cambridge. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. OK, and how soon after the test can I pick up my results? It takes 13 calendar days for the results to be processed. Can you let me know how much it is and the form of payment? The examination fee is 200 US dollars. You can pay by credit or debit card. We also accept checks. We only accept cash as a form of payment in exceptional circumstances. And one last question. Can I mail you the application documents? Certainly. You can send all the documents by registered mail to our address. 47 Clover Place, New Rochelle, New York. Could you spell New Rochelle for me, please? Certainly. N E W R O C H E L L E. Could I have the zip code as well? Sure. Our zip code is 10806. Thanks. You can also email us at I inquiry at examsmail.com or phone us at 325-9082. I think that's all. Thank you very much for all the information. Bye. You're welcome. Goodbye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear a lecture. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. I'd like to introduce Rebecca Bramwell, an artist and illustrator who has come along today to talk to you all about getting your first job or commission as an artist. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you for inviting me. I remember when I graduated back in 1983, I was very excited about getting my first commission. My degree was in fine art, and I'd worked long and hard to get it. I was an enthusiastic student, and I never found it difficult to find the incentive to paint. I think as a student... ...and being settled by the Romans explains their lust for blood. By about AD 200, the administration of Britain was divided in two. York became the capital of Britannia Inferia, and London of Britannia Superior. Around the same time, the city also acquired its famous walls, probably about 20 foot high. Why did they build such high walls? It was a protective measure which may have been due to civil war, initiated when Governor Claudius Albinus tried to claim the imperial crown in Rome. Was paganism still predominant then? Yes, but Christianity appears to have reached the province at an early date, and only a year after the religion became officially tolerated in the empire, London had its own bishop, Restitutus, who is known to have attended the imperial council of Al. You really delve deep. I think you'll do well on your tutorial paper. Good luck, David. Thanks.
Good morning, all. Welcome to our regular lecture on health issues. This series of lectures is organised by the Students' Union and is part of an attempt to help you stay healthy while coping with study and social life at the same time. It's a great pleasure to welcome back Ms. Mary Kirk, who is a professional health advisor and physical education officer. Thank you, Peter, for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be back. Today we're going to discuss the benefits of exercise. University life is hectic and stressful. It also involves a lot of sedentary work, that is, sitting for many hours at a time. What I'd like to focus on is how to approach exercise, not only from the aspect of health benefits, but also as a form of stress relief. I know it's hard to organise your time around studies and socialising, but you can socialise while exercising. If you have an hour free in the morning, afternoon, or evening, it would be a good idea to get together with your friends and create a sports team. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. The grounds of the university are ample enough to support every student's need to become active. There are also readily available facilities at your disposal, such as a football field, tennis, and badminton courts. There's also a swimming centre, and within that building is a gymnasium. With a variety of programs such as aerobics and weight training, if the idea of attending one of these facilities seems daunting, then you can walk along the river. Oh, and that reminds me, the university also offers rowing. If there is a sport that you're interested in that's not on offer, you can approach either your student union representative, or speak with sports administration manager, Mr. Lawrence Cavendish. Now I want to talk about why exercise is beneficial physically and emotionally. The obvious results are physical. You can keep fit by using muscles that ordinarily don't get used in the classroom. The health benefits are astronomical. You'll live longer, be happier, and look good. By building muscle, you strengthen your bones, a definite advantage for women in their later stages of life. As women are prone to osteoporosis, it also strengthens your heart. Yes, don't forget your heart is a muscle, and the more exercise you do and the harder you work, the more blood is pumped from your heart to your brain. Now this brings me to the psychological advantages of exercise. When we are active, endorphins are released into our brain. An endorphin is a chemical that is released when your heart rate is pumping beyond its normal capacity. It's the same as adrenaline. You can actually feel when endorphins kick in. You feel a rush, almost a high. The benefits of this are numerous. Your brain works at peak capacity for a longer period of time. Your awareness is maximized, and the fatigue you usually feel at four o'clock in the afternoon. Will be non-existent. In one word, exercise makes you sharp. Now, I'm not saying that you should overdo exercise, because too much of anything can be dangerous. But if you think about your daily routine, you spend about six hours a day in lectures and another two or more hours studying. That's a long time to be sitting, and that is a long time for your body not to be moving around. So try and find at least one hour a day to get some exercise. If you can't fit in one hour a day, try one hour every second day or half an hour a day. You will see rewards instantly. You'll feel great and look great. This I can promise you. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part four. Part four. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Okay, I'd like to keep this meeting as brief as possible, as I'm sure we all have things to do. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. This is the first of many field trips you'll be going on, so there are a few rules I'd like to make clear now. Most importantly, I want you all to remember that simply because you are leaving the college. Does not mean that you are not studying. This is an essential part of your course and should be treated as such. There will be two assignments for you to complete whilst you are there, and some extension work you will be expected to do over the weekend. So I suggest you all pay attention on the day. Moving on, remember that we are going to a salt marsh and must dress appropriately. High-heeled shoes and t-shirts are not what I consider appropriate. You need good footwear, preferably boots, and you should bring a waterproof jacket as the weather is unpredictable. It would also be a good idea to bring a change of clothes. There is a chance you will get wet, and a three-hour return journey in damp clothes is nobody's idea of fun. We will be on the marsh from about ten o'clock to about four, so you will be given a light lunch. However, if you want to bring any snacks with you, then please feel free to do so. Although we will be stopping for dinner on the way home. Now this is the fourth time the college has been to Park Drive Salt Marsh, and so far we have never lost a student. <laughs> However, remember that there are twenty-eight people going, and if you are late, you will be keeping myself and your colleagues waiting, and at that time in the morning you will not find me very forgiving. Please try to arrive a few minutes before seven. If you are not here on the hour, you risk being left behind. For those of you who are being collected in the evening, you can expect to be back here between eight thirty and nine p.m. But do warn whoever may be coming for you that the traffic is unpredictable, and it may well be later. Before you go, I'll hand out your assignment papers and briefly explain what you have to do. Now, on the first page. All you are required to do is identify the flora and fauna on the page, and find an example in the salt marsh. As I told you on Monday, you will need a camera for this. I recommend one of those disposable cameras rather than something more valuable, as the marsh can get very dirty. Now, on page two, you will be looking more at the bird life on the marsh. You should be able to see what you have to do for this assignment. But there will be plenty of time on the way there to ask any other questions. Well, we'll stop there, and I'll see you all on Friday morning. Oh, before you go, just a word of caution: the plants are there to be seen and photographed only. Remember that this is a protected site, and we will have to get permission for this trip. If there are any problems, we may not be allowed to go again, and you will be spoiling the opportunity for other students. Okay, if you have any questions, come and see me later today. Or tomorrow. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. I thought I had it figured out. Believed in us. We were meant to be, no doubt. A teenage love, everybody else could see the way we were living in a fantasy. When I.